Hi, I'm Jonathan M Zero JSX. Did you hear that? I think that's the sound of Icon dropping some new radios in Tokyo. All jokes aside, this weekend is the Tokyo Ham Fair, and it's typically when Icom release new radios. Yaesu tends to do it at Dayton, as long as a bunch of other manufacturers, in fact, but Icom tend to do it in Tokyo, which is of course their home ham fair. There are three products to talk about. One big one, two less big. Let's start with the biggie, which is of course the new IC7300 Mark II. This one I am so ridiculously excited for. I've owned a 7300 since about 2017, about a year after they were released to the public. And in that time, I've enjoyed using it. It's still on the bench behind me. But there's always been that nagging feeling that it's just missing a couple of things, which, to be honest, the new one completely solves for me. Let's just break it down a little bit because... Yes, there's some big features, but there's also some internal things we need to talk about too. They have upgraded uh, the receiver and transmitter performance. So the reciprocal mixing dynamic range uh, has now an improved approximability to 105 dB at 2 kHz separation. And they've also improved the phase noise on transmit by about 12 dB at 1 kHz frequency separation. Basically, cleaner transmit, cleaner receive. That's all you need to know over the existing IC7300. Not that the existing 7300 is any slouch in those regards either. They have also uh, managed to lower its current draw on receive from around 0.9 amps to about 0.7 amps in receive standby. I imagine transmit is gonna be broadly the same. As a result of that power efficiency savings, the new radio will also run a little bit cooler Again, I've never noticed my 7300 get particularly hot, but the new radio will run cooler. Uh, I think they're saying about 30% cooler. I might make, maybe making that up inside my head. And now here are the big things that I'm really excited for with the 7300 Mark II. And it's mostly because ICOM Japan have listened to users. They've heard us loud and clear about the things that we've been wanting from this radio and they are doing pretty much all of them. First off, display output. I would have been happy if it was DVI, but no, I come on this radio for the first time from a Japanese manufacturer, they've gone the whole hog, they've licensed HDMI, you've got an HDMI connector on the rear of the radio to power an external display, or if you're like me, in my use case would be in order to run it into a capture card for live streaming. I am so thrilled that ICOM have done that. Uh, I know that obviously ICOM is a bit late to the game in terms of their sort of entry level SDR doing that. Obviously, uh, Yosu with the 710 has done that from the off, but I'm so pleased that exists. Uh, receive antenna connectors. So obviously there was this modification that I can't remember who manufactured it, to be honest. Um, it was Inrad, wasn't it? It was Inrad. Inrad did a, uh, a adapter. You could modify the internal, so you could add a receive antenna port to your radio. It took the place of the antenna tuner connector, but it was a way of doing it. That's now not needed. On the Mark II, there is a receive antenna in and a receive antenna out, and all of the benefits that could lead you. So if you wanted to have a dedicated receive antenna, maybe a loop on the ground, or maybe a magnetic receive loop, you can do that. You could also, and one use case that ICOM gave was to uh, use a bandpass filter on the receive. It's via, you know, you go out, out the receive port through a bandpass filter and back in. You can certainly do that. There are so, so many options here. Um, I'm thrilled that they've done that as well. Built in CW decoder. Uh, again, for the first time from ICOM, they are putting in a CW decoder in one of their radios. Not even the 7610 or the 7760 has a CW decoder in it, but now the 7300 Mark II does. The next big one for me, because I like to use my radios remote. I enjoy using them when I'm in the shack, but I also like the flexibility of loading up 
the RSBA1 software on a laptop when I'm away from the shack, remoting in and operating as if I was here. It has been possible with the 7300, but it means you previously had to use a computer connected over USB to the radio to act as the server. And that's worked fine for me, but there are limitations to that because you're limited to the USB speed for the waterfall, for instance, which isn't that great. Certainly, you look at it on the screen of the radio and you look at it what's presented on RSBA1 and you go, yeah, okay, it's just not as good. The experience of RSBA1 with something like a 7610, a 7760, or even the IC705, and also an IC700, now I'll come to think it too, is much better. You get a much more fluid waterfall. With the 7300 Mark II, they have put a LAN port on the back of the radio, uh, so it will run the server inside the radio. So if you want to remote control it, you can. You just need power, an antenna, and an internet connection over Ethernet. Top, top work icon. I cannot wait to try that out. I've tried it with the 7610. Cannot wait to give it a go with the 7300 Mark II. And now the last one. This has been my dream for so long. And I've tried using virtual COM ports to do this and not had much success whatsoever. Firstly, the minor thing that ICOM have updated the connector on the back of the 7300 Mark II to a USB Type-C top work icon. But secondly, when you plug it in over USB, you get two COM ports that appear on your computer, similarly to the IC705, I would guess. But it means that you could run two independent applications running cat control with your radio without needing to do any kind of server with Hamlib or anything like that. It will just work natively. So in my use case, for instance, I could have one cat or one COM port being used by Station Master for the frequency stuff and a second COM port dedicated for WSJTX if I wanted to run FT8. Of course, we've still got the audio built in as well. So you've still got that USB sound card uh, internally in the radio. So you don't worry about any kind of extra interface. It's just great. I'm so excited for this radio. It is ridiculous how excited I am. And I think I'm mostly excited because ICOM have listened. That's the thing. They've heard us loud and clear and it's nice to know that the features that we've been requesting for from the 7300, specifically that display output, let's be honest, are coming. That's all fact. That's all fact. I'm now going to speculate. ICOM have not yet announced any kind of pricing for this new radio. They've mentioned end of this calendar year for sort of first deliveries. They haven't said which regions that's likely to be. So here's me speculating now based upon an educated guess. I suspect ICOM are targeting this radio to compete pretty comparably with the FTDX10. So its price is going to reflect that. I suspect it's going to be slightly more than an FTDX10 given all the feature set. And it's also going to obviously then be more than the current selling price of an IC7300. So I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to predict a sale price in pounds, this is, of somewhere between 1300 and 1500 I think if it was any more than that, it's going to start treading on the toes of the 7610. Any less than that, then I don't think, well, I don't think ICOM will make any money, to be honest, from it. So that's, that's where I think it's going to end up. If I'm completely wildly wrong and it comes in at a thousand pounds, well then they're gonna sell like hotcakes. I think they're gonna sell like hotcakes anyway. But that's my prediction, somewhere between 13 and 1500 pounds. Uh, I've had a chat with a few other people today about that. We're kind of all in agreement that that's kind of where it's most likely to end up being. But until ICOM Japan release pricing information to the various distributors and then onto the dealers, we won't know that for certain. So that is pure speculation. As for availability in different markets, typically ICOM serve the home market first, so it's likely that we'll see uh, units in Japan before anywhere else. Afterwards, well, then it's anybody's guess. It used to be that typically the Americas were served second. Of recently, though, of late, with ICOM radios, that's not been the case. So 
there is a chance that Europe gets served second and America third, or there's a chance that ICOM look to serve both Europe and particularly North America uh, at the same time. I also suspect that this radio is already in full production. Given how at the show, at the ham fair show in Tokyo, it looked to be a pretty much working unit on display, not the mock-ups of the two products we're gonna talk about in a minute, but I suspect that already in full production of this radio, and I also suspect that production of the 7300 Mark I, if you want, has already finished. Again, that's me speculating. I don't have any information which to confirm that. That's just my suspicions. Okay, we'll we're, we're park that to one side and we'll talk about two products which Icom have unveiled, but they're very much on the roadmap. There's no clear, this is when they're gonna come out on them. The first is the long, long overdue successor to the ID5100, the ID5200. Obviously it's picking up a lot where the 5100 has left off in terms of it being sort of a dual band, VHF, UHF, mobile with D-Star obviously and FM, bringing from the ID52 and the 52 Plus, I suppose lots of other radios now as well, a color screen, that's very nice. The thing that I'm most excited for with this radio is that it looks like it's going to support APRS for the first time on an ICOM radio, which does lead me to have the question, can that be firmware implemented on previous ICOM radios? Could that be implemented into, I don't know, an IT705, for instance, or an ID52? Who knows? That might be pie in the sky thinking, but certainly the mock-up 5200 on display in Tokyo shows it on the Japanese APRS frequency. In Japan, they use 9600 board for APRS. It shows it's in a TNC mode for 9600. I suspect it's going to support APRS, which again, given that Kenwood are developing their mobile radio at the same time, might mean that we're going to have a head to head race between the new Icon mobile and the new Kenwood mobile. Both will do DSA, both will do APRS. I think the thing that will set the ICOM ID5200 slightly ahead of the Kenwood based upon previous experience with other Kenwood radios is the near repeater functionality supporting both D-Star and FM, which on the Kenwood range, it only supports D-Star. That would be my perfect mobile, by the way. A D-Star capable radio with that near repeater functionality with FM and APRS that's every box ticked. Probably 50 watts out as well. Um, Bluetooth, I imagine, is going to be there. All the kind of stuff we expect from Icom at this point. Finally, it's a new antenna tuner, the AH6, which looks to be a replacement for the old AH4. Uh, very scant details about this. I suspect it's 100 watts. I suspect it's just updating the design. Uh, to reflect component availability, uh, but that's coming at some point as well. So if you wanted a long wire tuner or remote tuner for your uh, for your station, the AH6 is coming. I imagine it's still going to use that same four pin Molex connector uh, that I can have used for like the last 30 years. So it's likely to support all of those radios for the last 30 years as well. Yeah, can you tell I'm excited? Uh, I really am excited to certainly have a play with a 7300 Mark II. Uh, if anybody wants to buy a 7300 Mark I, mine will be up for sale because I definitely want a Mark II. Uh, interestingly, one, you look at the front panels of both the original and the Mark II 7300, it's a bit like playing Spot the Difference. The two differences I found, one is obviously the new one says 7300 Mark II. Two, they've changed the color of the power light. On the original it's green, on the new one it's blue. Uh, so that would match the 7610, because that's blue on that radio. But otherwise it's the same. All of the changes are on the back and that's the far more interesting picture to look at. Uh, that's it for this quick video. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Let's continue to speculate down below. Do you want a 7300 Mark II? Are you more interested in the ID5200? 
or are you actually thinking, oh, man, do you know what, that's all very nice, but I'm very happy with whatever I've currently got. And that's perfectly fine too. And I think before I close out this video, what I want to say is, even though ICOM have just announced a new radio in the 7300 Mark II, it doesn't make the 7300, the existing radio, any less good. And I think I often fall into that trap and get excited about the new thing, but in fact, the radio that I've got that's on the bench still works the same today as it did yesterday. And it's still a good radio. So if you're watching this and you're just thinking about buying a 7300 Mark II, are those features really necessary for you? Or could you actually pick up a bargain of a 7300? Because I guarantee there are going to be loads hitting the market very soon and on the used market. And because of that, I imagine the price is going to fall. So if you wanted a 7300, hold tight, because I imagine used sales are going to, well, they're gonna be inundated. The used market is gonna be inundated with 7300s in a very short time. So hold tight and pick up a bargain of a 7300 if you don't need the new features of the 7300 Mark II. I do need those features. But anyway, that's by the by. Thanks very much for watching. If you have liked this video, there is a button specifically for that. If you haven't, there's another one that seems to work just fine too. And if you haven't already done so, please do click on that subscribe button and also click that notification bell and you'll be told whenever I upload a new video. There's another video coming up over here that the algorithm thinks that you're like next. Until next time, 73. Bye-bye.